Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, sometimes BVS for short. I've been defending this movie since it came out. Why? Marvel has done nearly everything better. I'm not arguing that, especially after 23 successful movies put out for uh, the world to see. But I'm not going to sit here and say that this particular movie deserved to have a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes when it came out in 2016. It didn't deserve for Zack Snyder to be fired from the overall franchise, which he borderline was, which he borderline was while filming Justice League as BVS came out. And it didn't deserve the hatred and criticism that it got just because it's not Marvel. So let's finally dive into this movie. I've wanted to say something on this um, basically ever since we started Knights of the Dirty Table here. Um, it's a, it, this show is a place to defend my points that I know are not the same as everyone else's, and this was ob obviously a difference of opinion compared to many others, and I'm, I'm fine with that. So let's begin. Let's start with the major criticism going into this movie before it was released. Why rush a cinematic universe? Do it like Marvel and build and let everything prosper over time. I mean, we got a, we got a Man of Steel movie for Superman, fine. Um, but you really wanted another Batman movie after just finishing The Dark Knight Rises and completing that trilogy? You're already groaning about the Robert Pattinson Batman movie that's getting made that was originally meant to have Ben Affleck in it, uh, you know, to direct and star. So I guarantee you, you would have either begrudgingly went to the theater to sit through Bruce's parents' death all over again, or you would have skipped out on the movie because you already knew the basic plot points and just wanted to dive right into the crossover movie. Plus, this film already came in at a disadvantage that Marvel Studios didn't really have to deal with. Before this movie, BVS, there have been one and a half Superman film franchises with two different actors in the role. I'm talking about Christopher Reeve's uh, four movies as well as Brandon Routh um, in Superman Returns. So it's kind of the same, but also not in a way. There have been two Batman film franchises with three different actors. Excuse me, four. Four actors in the roles. Uh, and I'm not even including the cultural craze of Adam West Batman in this. General audiences already know who these characters are, Batman and Superman. But they didn't know who Iron Man was, or they didn't know who Thor was before those movies came out. Not, not the general audience. Comic book fans did. But general population, they didn't know Tony Stark. They didn't know the God of Thunder. Not like this. It's much easier to build up something with characters that people don't already know about than superhero staples like the two greatest comic book heroes of all time. So establishing this Batman in a crossover film it really was the only way to go. And no one complained when they did the exact same thing for Spider-Man and Captain America Civil War. Everyone was fine with it, but because this wasn't Marvel, everyone was ready to criticize. Now with Wonder Woman, while they were already working on her film by the time BVS was released, there were no guarantees that a female solo story was gonna be successful. It made sense to, at the time, put her in a movie with already established general audience characters. They did the same thing with Black Panther and the other superhero Fight Club movie, Civil War. Uh, I think without, if not for Wonder Woman, there wouldn't be a Black Widow movie coming up or Captain Marvel, which was already released. But there was no way of knowing if Wonder Woman was going to be as successful, if not putting her into a film with already established characters, in my opinion. And if they established the trajectory of creating solo films to establish a universe, you would have easily said that DC was copying Marvel's formula. You would have easily criticized them for that, just trying to cash in on, on Marvel's success, that they should have done this sooner. But it's not like they didn't try. In Superman Lives, the failed movie attempt at putting Nicolas Cage in the red and blue tights, directed by Tim Burton, returning to the DC fold after directing the first two Batman movies, Superman was to meet up with Michael Keaton's Batman, establishing a movie universe for DC Comics as early as the late 90s. It never happened. 
probably for the better, because that movie would have most likely involved fighting a giant spider at the end. Look it up. That's a fact. But it's not like WB never gave a shared universe a thought. They were just too scared and didn't want to take a risk after Batman and Robin was released in 1997. It changed all of their plans going forward for major theatrical releases with DC characters. With Batman himself, everyone said that this wasn't a good portrayal of him because he uses guns and he kills people. But no one batted an eye when bats killed evil clowns in Batman Returns by blowing them up with their own bombs. When he actually used a handgun in this movie, in BVS, it was the future and it was after the apocalypse came and your goal is just to survive. Morals are gone. A bleak survival can just change a man. And even from Man of Steel up to this point, Zach was trying to make it clear that these were meant to be real human responses to life and death, to what is considered the end of the world. So I didn't have a problem with him killing people in this movie, and arguably I don't really have a problem with him killing in Batman Returns. He killed henchmen in this movie just as he has in previous alternate continuity stories and films. This is a Batman 20 years on the job, and he just saw an alien destroy Metropolis 18 months prior in Man of Steel. He sees that everything he's done up to this point is meaningless when an all-powerful god swoops down and crushes everything in his path. Yes, Superman saved the day, but at a major cost. And what if someone gets control of him, or in Bruce's eyes, uh, what if Superman changes his mind and decides it's not worth it to protect Earth anymore? Or he just gets really angry one day. While Bruce is rich, he is considered a blue-collar kind of superhero. Does a lot of hard labor while on the job. All the financial power and equipment he's accumulated means practically nothing when compared to that of a Kryptonian on planet Earth. You don't think people in this country would also want to find a way to protect themselves from someone who's stronger than anything known to man? They grab guns and any means of protection as quickly as possible. I mean, you can kind of see with everything going on in the U.S. today. So... Bruce Wayne in Zack Snyder's universe kills henchmen now because his mind is that they've made their choices, these henchmen, and he doesn't have time to save the little guy when literally all of Earth is at stake in his eyes. So I was never bothered by this Batman and Ben Affleck. Um, they're still my favorite on-screen. It's still my favorite on-screen interpretation of the character in Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne-Batman combo because I love the fight style established in this movie, especially at the dock scene uh, near the end. I, I just thought the way he handled all the gunplay and everything, I thought that was just really well executed. And I also like his duality, Ben Affleck's duality f between public billionaire uh, Bruce Wayne, but then also secret identity needing to accomplish a mission, Bruce Wayne. I appreciated that difference a lot that I don't feel is as strongly played out in other films. And maybe it's just personal choice. Now with Superman, who was already controversial going into this film uh, due to him murdering General Zod in Man of Steel. Superman wouldn't kill anyone. He doesn't have any emotion in this Superman. This is not my Superman. I'll use the same phrase here. This never bothered me. Man of Steel is a story of Superman becoming Superman. The name is only used once, and it's in passing at that point in, in the movie. Um, this is a Superman that has felt alien all of his life and then lives as an outcast going into adulthood. He's supposed to just feel welcome on Earth after having Pa Kent tell him that it's too dangerous to use any of your powers. This, this was a kid trying to save a family from dying by Zod's heat vision near the end of the movie. This Superman doesn't have any experience on being a hero at this point. The entire Kryptonian attack from Smallville going into Metropolis, that all happens on the same day. So there's not that much time to assess how you're doing as a hero. It all just goes by very quickly, if we're going off of real real life timeline here. Now, let's, let's jump ahead to BVS. The world accepts this Superman, but they treat him as a god sent from the heavens, ready to fix all of the world's problems. Floods, wars, fires, whatever. They don't see him as a person 
with, with feelings. And everything he does is considered political. It's established in this world, in this universe, that every act on Earth is a political act. Wait, that, that's, just like, that's just like our world. That's just like here today. An outcast living alone and feeling alone for years all of a sudden has energy to deal with people? Treat him poorly one moment and then treat him like a god the next? That's, that's a lot for anyone to take in. And that's also just like our world with anyone who finds new success. It's, it's a culture shock. You see it from athletes who enter into whatever big league sport they're going into, actors who get successful with very big roles. Their, their entire world changes, and it's a lot for most people to take on, especially as we have a better understanding of mental health in 2021. And that also feels like that's what Zack Snyder was trying to do with this universe, was to take not so much real world problems putting it into this movie, but trying to take take the real life emotions of people and put them in these two larger than life characters of Batman and Superman. How would a real person react to whatever's going on around them? Batman's case, a all powerful God comes from the sky and everything he's done up to this point is meaningless. And Superman, I'm just trying to find my place in the world and everyone wants to treat me like an outsider for the better and for the worst. And let's just get Lex Luthor out of the way too. His popular appearance among most is that he is an intelligent, bald business tycoon. But actually his first appearance in the comics was mostly just that of a mad scientist with red hair, which most people aren't aware of. I never got the Joker comparison that people had made for Jesse Eisenberg. Quite frankly, never once crossed my mind that that's what he was going for. What I saw was a jittery kid who also thought that he knew everything, but became threatened by someone who is far more powerful than him, and he now has to regain control over everything that he knows. Everything that he knows before was gone, and he's just trying to get that semblance of normalcy back where he is once again in power. Jesse Eisenberg played more into the scientist role, and I respect that after having two different film portrayals of Lex Luthor prior to this one, to shake it up, to do what hadn't been done before on screen. I appreciate that. And I understood Lex's plan, even after the first viewing of the movie, almost perfectly. His plan made more sense to me than Baron Zemo's in Civil War. Um, Zemo needed a lot of luck, and I feel like Luther planned a lot of what he did out. Some of that plan was taken out and put back in for the Ultimate Edition director's cut of Batman v Superman, and it did enhance his schemes a bit more, but I was still satisfied by how Luther got Superman and Batman to go duke it out. He's the smartest guy in the room. I'm totally okay with him figuring out easily who the two superheroes are who their secret identities are in their off hours, and I'm okay with him. F I'm okay with him figuring it out off camera. That didn't phase me as much. I do agree with many that Wonder Woman was a major highlight of this movie. I think it was smart to put her in this movie as a precursor to her own movie. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't think her solo movie would have worked without having put her into here, and I thought it was just a nice taste of what was to come with Gal Gadot. Uh, in her role, and I really think she's only gotten better with the role, she's gotten stronger with the role, and even just viewing her in outtakes for these DC films, it seems like she's just a joy to work with, and everyone enjoys working with her. That's what I get from it. So, let's also briefly dive into Martha. While I did think that when I saw this scene in the theaters, it would be ripped apart by many people, I could just see it, oh no, they're gonna rip this apart. I still thought it was a decent way to bring the two heroes together at the end. Not the best way. I think they should have found a different way, but I do think it still works. Batman didn't see Superman as a man prior to that moment. A typical human man has parents that love him. When Superman is begging for his life, or begging for life, it's not for himself. He's not begging for his life. He's begging for his mother's life because that is who matters the most to him, to Clark. 
it wasn't that Bruce got a clear head just from hearing his mother's name. Like, oh, I see everything clearly now. Martha, perfect. It's because he realized that this person he's about to kill also has human qualities. He grew up here on Earth. Clark is about to lose his parent, and Bruce doesn't want that same feeling he had when he lost both of his parents to happen to anyone else. He realized that his vendetta was wrong. He, Bruce made a grave mistake, and he was fighting the wrong enemy, even though Alfred said to him he was. He wasn't listening before, but he was ready to listen now. And again, I don't think it's the best way to bring these two together, but I don't think it's as bad and vague as everyone might have suggested when they first saw this in 2016. A few extra thoughts just before I move on. Um, I personally liked the Doomsday Zod same body characterization choice. Um, I just thought it was a great way to make uh, Zod more personal to the story that's happening in front of us and even being with Doomsday too. I wasn't exactly expecting a Death of Superman story in this with Doomsday, even though he was on screen, but I, I respected what they did with Doomsday to make it pertinent to Superman. Uh, and also him going forward in the future of the DCEU. Superman not seeing the wheelchair bomb to me was also okay because he clearly said that he wasn't looking for it. And some Superman stories say that uh, he has to control when he uses some of his powers, and this to me was just another case of that. It does help that the chair was actually lined up with lead as revealed in the ultimate edition of this movie, but I didn't think it was dumb for him to not see the wheelchair bomb because he made it clear that he wasn't looking for it. If you're not looking for trouble, then you're not going to find it, I guess. Sometimes trouble does find you, but I wasn't as bothered by him. You know, how did he not using, how did he not use his powers when he could have easily seen that bomb? Well, even without the lead involved in the Ultimate Edition, just take that out and go with a the theatrical cut. It's still fine because, again, this is still a Superman learning how to be Superman. And I do still think that the title of this movie is actually dumb. I wish it was World's Finest or even just Dawn of Justice without the Batman v Superman. But I'm sure early on there was a marketing thing telling Zack and crew, we got to make sure that people know that this is a Batman and Superman movie. So, yes, it's dumb, but not as dumb, I guess, as most perceive. After this movie finished its theatrical run, or even just after the first weekend, quite frankly, people wanted this movie destroyed. They said it was horrendous. A good portion of those same people have since said that after further watching, that it's not that bad. You just don't like the idea of a movie not spelling everything out for you, that you have to think for yourself after watching a movie. Marvel is very good at explaining everything to you, and this is not a knock on Marvel, everyone knows that I, I love the MCU and it's the greatest film franchise of all time. I'm not ever going to dispute that. But Zack Snyder has always been a director that wants to go deeper with his movies and his characters. From 300 to Watchmen to Sucker Punch, he has always looked for more and he wanted the audience to figure it out too, whatever that more was. Do I think he was the right person to direct this movie after establishing his story and his path in Man of Steel? Yes, absolutely. Was he the right man to oversee the entire universe and make all the choices for casting, producing, and storytelling going forward on this DC Extended Universe? No. I don't think that any director should have that much power and influence over a multi-franchise property of characters. That's why I'm nervous for Power Rangers and Jonathan and Twistle, who uh, directed uh, a couple Netflix projects, and now he's going to be the architect of the entire Power Ranger shared universe going forward. I'll save that topic for another day, but there's a reason why I'm a little bit nervous, even for my favorite franchise of all time, being Power Rangers. A director, in my opinion, can't do what Kevin Feige has done. Unify everyone from the top brass of executives all the way down to the cast and crew. Zach, I think, can bring actors and crew together, and I'm sure that he is a blast to work with and why so many people close to him have come to his defense on his movies that he's made and even to his defense long after being uh, done with the DC Extended Universe. But Zack Snyder is an artist. Executives are business people, and if they don't get their money, then art doesn't matter. 
After all this hate for the movie, at the end of the day, it is just a movie. That's all it is. It's a form of entertainment. You wanted a change, the general population that wanted BVS swept from existence. You got that change. And how has that been working out so far, DC fans, with everything that we've gotten since? The ups and downs of where we think DC is going to go moving forward and then taking steps back. This is the world we live in because you wanted a change. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, if you completely agree with me or you also want to burn my opinions down to the ground, feel free to like, comment, share with all your friends, and make sure that you tune in tonight's at the Dirty Table every Friday live at 5 only on the Zen Den Studios Twitch. Whoa! Welcome to the end of the Knights of the Dirty Table video that you just watched. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like our video, share with all your friends, and catch our live stream every Friday live at 5 only on the Zen Den Studios Twitch channel. I gotta go wander off into space. See ya! Whoa! Whoa!